The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied, Friend, who appointed me as your judge or arbitrator? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed. For though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, What shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods, and I shall say to myself, Now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for so many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool. This night, your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus it will be for all who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Tell my brother to share the inheritance. My friend, who appointed me as your judge or arbitrator? Can't you this, just picture this guy a few years later? He's speaking to a religious leader and recounting his story about his encounter with this uncaring rabbi, Jesus goes something like this. You know, I used to go to the synagogue all the time. But then one day I went to this rabbi Jesus with a problem. He just blew me off. He wouldn't even give me the time of day. It really shook my faith. And, well, that's why I've just given up on organized religion. To which the religious leader says, Wow, I'm really sorry you've had such a bad experience, but you're absolutely right. It's people like that rabbi, Jesus said, give religion a bad name. I can assure you, if you come here, you won't find anyone like that rabbi, Jesus, in our congregation. Ouch. Guard against all greed. We tend to associate greed with the hoarding of money. By the way, anyone here win last night's Mega Millions? (laughs) Me either. (laughs) You know, we live in a capitalistic, consumeristic, materialistic, take care of number one kind of culture. For us, greed is even a greater endemic than is COVID-19. And greed comes in many, many forms. It isn't all just money and possessions. There is a reason we have an expression. They're driving as if they own the road. Whenever our focus is lost on ourself, essentially we're, we're caught up in greed. We even 
attempt to make grace a consumer item. How many good, faithful, religious folks do you know, and I don't just mean laity, I mean even priests and bishops, speak about grace in quantitative terms? He gets X amount of grace for that, and a little more grace for that, lots of grace if you do this. Sometimes when I hear those kinds of expressions, I find myself wondering, hmm, does God measure grace using the English or the metric system? Grace is very real. But grace is experiential and relational. It's way beyond measuring. The greed is real too. Greed is present when we make an idol of, out of the status quo, or conversely, if we seek change just for the sake of change. Greed is quite present in things like racism or sexism or wherever people are marginalized. And wherever and whenever community and relationships are undermined, you can be quite certain that some form of greed is in that mix. In this inheritance dispute, Jesus seems to really be addressing both brothers as well as all of us. He's warning one not to be greedy with the inheritance. He's warning the other not to let his plea for justice be motivated by greed. Because if these siblings are more concerned with inheritance than they are with their relationship, both have already lost. St. Augustine taught us that behind every one of our wants and our desires, is actually our longing for God. And when we step back and look at our wants and our longings from that perspective, certainly it's much easier to relativize material wants, especially when we place them in the face of relationships and in community, caring for others, or sharing the gifts with which God has blessed us. Greed isolates. And we are not made for isolation. We are baptized to be in God's image and God's likeness. For us, life is fundamentally life in community.